What is up, players? It is Warbots Tay. Welcome to a another tutorial. This is the final tutorial for my Cyborg Strelik model. This is uh, one of the interesting models in that it, it comes as one piece. Most of the Strelik models come in two pieces where you have to uh, put the, the guns on. But uh, I wanted to make sure that you could see everything on the model, so that's why I kind of wanted to do this one. Gosh, what was that? Was that Mornfang Brown? I think that was Mornfang Brown. Bugman's Glow is another color you're going to need. Rekharth Flesh. Oh, Rekharth Flesh again. <laughs> Kislev Flesh. Steel Legion Drab. What else do we have? Mechanicus Standard Gray. Look how awesome that gold looks. That gold is so terrific. Scale Color. Citrine Alchemy. It's just such a great range of products. Elven Gold, again from Scale Color. The uh, equivalents would be, I think, Runefang Steel, um, Auric Armor Gold, all of the their very yellow golds from Games Workshop. I also use white from Vallejo and black from Vallejo. You can interchange those if you want with uh, obviously skull white or white scar with the white and Abaddon black or any, any kind of black. So basically either black or white. And here we go. He looks terrific. All right. The first thing we're going to do is you remember our model was washed after the end of the last tutorial. So we're going to go back and we're going to bring those colors back up starting with Mornfang Brown. Now depending on how dark you want those shadows to look, that Agrax Earthshade, you could put it on really heavy and thick or you can dilute it if you want it to be more of a glaze than a wash. I kind of like having it straight out of the pot because then you can really see what you're working with and it'll, um, it'll tone down that Mornfang Brown already on the jacket. So what I'm doing basically is I'm just bringing up the colors again. And when I paint my highlights, my first highlight is always the base color. And uh, that is because the base color you put on over the primer, the, the entire tone will change if you wash it. So like it changed with Agrax Earthshade, it, it got a lot of the natural shadows popping out and um, the whole thing turned a lot darker, uh, you might even say muddier. Bringing it back up with that same base color, Mornfang Brown, allows me to pick and choose where I want those dark shadows to remain and where I want to bring it back to that original color. If you just have it as that original color and you don't shade it, maybe you just want to highlight it, skip the washing step, what tends to happen is that you don't have that depth to contrast the highlights. So I always like to shade first and then highlight. Some people like to highlight and then shade or glaze. There's no right or wrong way to do it, it's just whatever you feel works best. So the way that I like to highlight cloth especially is that I follow the lines. Instead of doing vertical paint strokes on the, that back area and horizontal paint strokes here, I kind of want to see where those folds are and follow the lines of the folds because that wash will have settled in the recesses, in the depressions of those folds. We leave those washes there and we highlight the upper parts of where the cloth folds over on itself to create that beautiful depth. I also like to bring out the color at the bottom of a model because no matter how uh, dark or light the, the middle is, however you play with the colors there, when, when you look at the bottom of a model, like the hem of the overcoat, that's where you kind of want to see the colors. And uh, I apologize for my camera kind of going out of focus here for a second. The uh, light, I think, is a little too bright, and I think the focus is uh, not where it should be on my camera. The focus, autofocus settings, the f-stop, all of that. So I'm constantly having to check the, the viewfinder there and put my hand in the back. So, uh, yeah, I apologize if that happens throughout this video. Um, Igor, what's wrong with you? 
It's been two years, master. I forget how to work this crazy thing. I guess that's... I guess that's alright. It's kind of been two years since I've done a tutorial. I don't know, it's been dramatic. Alright, we're taking Steel Legion Drab now, and we're going to be working in some highlights. The first thing we're going to be doing is highlighting up the little top of this guy's hat here. I imagine that it's some kind of uh, hide or like thick heavy cloth. A little bit different than the cloth of the overcoat, but it's it's got some nice little textures to it. The top of the hat does with some stitching, and I just wanted to paint it a little bit, a little beefy. Uh, this camera, Igor. Yes, master. You gotta work on the settings for this thing, buddy. Being out of practice is no excuse. My apologies, Master. Have you lost weight? Oh, thank you, Master. I've been exercising. All right, so now... I'll talk to you about that more, Igor. What I'm doing is I'm taking my Steel Legion Drab, I watered it down, I thinned it down with a little bit of water so that it, it flows a little bit smoother and it's not as heavy. And you want your highlights to be... A, a little bit, I don't, um, a little thinner than that heavy base coat. You want to be able to kind of play with it, and if it comes on a little too thick, you want to be able to kind of swirl it around or move it around on the area that you're highlighting, and that'll allow you to spread the color out, make it not a little bit diluted, not as heavy as that base color. And again, I'm following the folds. I'm leaving the uh, large flat areas of the cloth, nice and mournfang browny, and I'm really just focusing on where the cloth either folds in on itself, the edges of the cloth, here like on the collar, because that um, th that surface, the edges, would uh, naturally pick up a little bit more light as it folds on itself, and uh, it's just a l more interesting to look at. So we're taking our guy up here to a war boss level standard, and uh, that means that it's going to look great from across the table. It's a high tabletop quality, and it's uh, going to look great. It's got these like individual highlight st strokes, brush strokes, and uh, no matter which way you pick it up and turn it to look at it, every part will be painted. There's not going to be any just uh, primered or base coated parts. If uh, you know there was a commissioned painter that I knew that got a lot of work done because he just kind of sprayed everything with his airbrush and uh, and then he did some sloppy washes and highlights and a, a lot of times you'd forget to turn the model upside down so that he could see you know what areas of the, the model the paint wasn't hitting I always pride myself that if you pick up one of my painted models and you turn it around in your hand no matter what you're, you're gonna see a painted surface and it's gonna have shading it's gonna have highlighting and uh, that's you know something I think as an artist you want to pride yourself on doing good work unless as an artist you pride yourself on doing quick work and and you don't mind that your product is not gonna hold up when you you know when you pick it up it's to each his own everybody wants everybody wants you know <laughs> to do their own thing I, I know some guys that just are like I throw three colors on a model what I'm doing now is I'm doing individual brush strokes to highlight this guy's fluffy hat. And I'm using Rackarth Flesh because look how look how beautifully that Rackarth Flesh pops that highlight. Now, what I could have done is gone back with Xandri Dust, which was my original color, but I'm not looking for a smooth transition of color. Like if you notice the to contrast the hat, look at the coat. And look how the coat very smoothly transitions the shade from that uh, Agrax Earth shade to the Mornfang Brown to the Steel Legion Drab. When you contrast that with the hat, what you're really going to see is that Rackarth flesh popping out with the shadows of Agrax Earth shade. Now you might ask, why didn't I just paint the whole hat in Rackarth flesh then? Because Rackarth flesh is a very pale color. 
Xandri Dust being the base color is going to give that Rakarth flesh a little undertone of that pale uh, mustardy yellow. Maybe not mustard. Mustard is too yellow. Uh, that kind of sandy yellow so that um, it doesn't look so washed out. If I just done Rakarth flesh with Agrax Earthshade, it would kind of wash itself out and almost turn a like a Steel Legion drab kind of brown. I didn't really want that. I wanted, I wanted a very vivid highlight with a very, very strong contrast to the Agrax Earthshade. All right, what I'm doing now is I'm highlighting up the skin, and instead of going back to Bugman's Glow, what I want is kind of the same effect where we've gotten our Bugman's Glow. We shaded it down with the Raiklin Flesh Shade. It looks really uh, ruddy and and uh, tanned and almost red, almost pinkish red. So what I'm doing is I'm adding just a teensy bit of Rackarth flesh to my Bugman's Glow. So you can see on my brush there, it's uh, kind of this pale pinkish color. And uh, I'm using this to bring out the highlights on the knuckles, the areas where the skin would kind of be stretching itself. So as, as his right hand is gripping the head of the rifle there, I'm looking for the areas where his his knuckles would be stretched taut, where his left hand is kind of gripping the uh, back part of the rifle, the, the main part of the gun is, I'm, I'm gonna be looking for those same areas. You don't wanna paint over the entire flesh area because that is going to kind of cover up the, uh, um, the Bugman's Glow and the Raikland Flesh Shade. Now, okay, the tricky thing when painting the highlights for the face is that he's mostly cheeks and nose. So that's what I'm concentrating my highlight colors on, the cheeks and the nose. Mechanic is standard gray. We'll get back onto more highlighting of the skin later. But what I wanted to do next was work on the next biggest area on the model. And as you can see, that would be his beard. So again, with Mechanic is standard gray, I'm looking to pick out the highlights that will uh, really stand out because of the texture. This beard is braided and it's uh, flowy and uh, it, it's kind of like wavy. It is it definitely got some volume and uh, some body to it. So when I'm working on these highlights, I want to bring that out. I kind of want to make like where the hair all kind of waves and curls in one direction. All of the hair that would be hit by the light would get this highlight and then as it weighs in the opposite direction that part would stay dark and by doing this I'm not highlighting the entire beard so I want the beard to look black with white highlights rather than a gray beard that has black shade if that makes sense if I wanted a gray beard what we could have done was paint the entire thing uh, Mechanica standard gray and wash that with known oil. That's not what I wanted to do. I want I want it to look like a black beard that is just reflecting light because it's so shiny and it's so healthy and it has so much volume. It's a magnificent, glorious beard. I used to have a beard like that. Lewis the Necromancer. I heard you were filming a tutorial. So I left the clubs where I was booty dancing with some spicy Latinas. All right. Look at you, more boss Tay, making your daily updates and your Patreons and your commission studio. Where are all the tutorials? Uh, I've, I've been really busy, Louis. I'm a one-man studio. Well, get back to it, Shani! All right. You heard him. What am I doing? <laughs> okay, I'm looking at the guy now. And <laughs> oh, boy. Did somebody say boy? Commissar Bane? <laughs> that was a perfectly natural transition. All right, all the voices are coming out, I guess. Elvin Gold. Let's talk about Elvin Gold. Yes, let's talk about Elvin Gold. It is quite heretical. 
I don't even know why you would say that, Commissar Bane. Don't question my authority, boy. I've been a Commissar since you were in short pants. All right, tell us about uh, Elven Gold. Elven Gold is very bright and yellow. It's a uh, complementary color. It would be Auric Armor Gold in the Citadel range, but scale color is a much more superior product when painting with metallics. I remember when you used to sound like Bane from the Batman movies, and I used to sound like Sean Connery. There's nothing wrong with that, Wobosh. All right. Well, obviously, I have to rewatch some of my old videos and relearn how to do all your guys' voices. You know nothing, Wobosh Tay. Are you quoting Game of Thrones at me now? No, of course not. Goodbye. So, Elvin Gold, we are using, again, as a highlight color. If we wanted to go back to the Necro Gold or the, um, I believe we used Dwarven Gold in the last video then it would uh, kind of bring out that reddish, kind of darker bronze gold. But with the el elven gold, we are really starting to focus on these yellow highlights. And what I love about the, the scale color, oh, my seat is so squeaky. What I love about these scale color golds is that they kind of really build on each other and they create this almost like oil paint uh, metallic effect where they, they or enamel paint rather. I can't remember if I'm thinking oil or, or enamel. I think enamel. Where it looks like natural metallic. It looks like a, uh, a metal surface rather than painted resin or painted plastic. And if you can do that with a metallic paint, then that is, that is the goal. And okay, so this color that I'm going to use now is really going to emphasize that. Citrine Alchemy there are a couple of colors that are called alchemy in the scale color set, and they are, gosh, I don't know how to describe it. If, if you look at the citrine alchemy here on my wet palette, I'm going to pour it on. It looks like a really, really white yellow gold. The elven gold next to it almost kind of pales in comparison. It looks like really, really yellow, whereas citrine alchemy seems like it's it's got that, that yellow gold, but it's got a lot of white. And it's also very um, watery. It's not as heavy in the, the pigment, that metallic pigment. So what I'm doing is I'm adding a little bit of that citrine alchemy to my elven gold. And I'm going to look at the model. What I'm doing now is I'm kind of turning it in my hand to see where the light reflects off of that gold. Where does it make the gold kind of shift into almost like a silver? This is what Games Workshop does with their Rune Fang Steel when they... A lot of times when you look at their how to paint articles in the white dwarfs or or anything like that, you'll notice that when they're painting gold colors, they like to end with rune fang steel and they'll paint up some of the uh, highlights on the model, the, the gold highlights they're going to do with rune fang steel. And it's kind of like an optical illusion because when you pick up the model, you see that rune fang steel and it looks like light hitting the gold and reflecting as silver. But all you're really doing is painting silver paint. When you're using Scale Colors Citrine Alchemy with their Elven Gold, it uh, emphasizes that gold color and using that, that white, what, whatever they use to highlight it is just it's absolutely brilliant because you can really just lightly brush that, that tip of your paintbrush over the, the gold details and it picks up that color and it looks like the light is catching it. But again, it's just using a kind of uh, optical trick to make your mind think that light is hitting the model at a certain angle, but instead of doing it with straight silver paint, it is using that really white uh, yellow gold. If somebody, <laughs> I don't know, Mark, if you're if you're watching this and you can explain that better than I can, I, I am so fascinated by how the alchemy colors work. There's this, uh, there are these like red alchemy paints included also that look really fantastic you if you mix that in it kind of creates this very reddish tinged gold and uh like make makes more like a rose gold but it's just amazing it's beautiful stuff all right we're gonna let that dry that is gonna do it for our gold paints and we're gonna move on to rackarth flesh and rackarth flesh is gonna be used at this point to i believe we're yeah we're building up that skin tone even more so 
you can see that the skin looks still a little flat. We can see where that Raglan flesh shade is shading the uh, fingers and the knuckles, but the back of the hand is still a little bit flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to really pop out the upper lines, the knuckles, the uh, tops of the fingers, anywhere that is right near one of the shaded areas. And I'm doing this by painting very, very carefully with my uh, the tip of my paintbrush here with a little bit more rack art flesh. If the first highlight was 75% Bugman's Glow, 25% rack art flesh, then this one is gonna be more 50-50 or even 60-40. Rack art flesh to Bugman's Glow. We're really bringing up that highlight. Chair is so squeaky. Now the final highlight that we're going to do is we're going to add Kislev Flesh to that mix. So we're not going to add too much. If our last highlight mix was 60% Rackard Flesh, 40% Bugman's Glow, then we're just going to add in just a little bit of Kislev Flesh to that, uh, to that color combo so that our highlight now gets a little bit of a yellowish tone to it. Not too much because we don't want to change the uh, change the overall color but we're adding in a different variation on that tone and again we don't want to we don't want to obscure what came before we don't want to cover it up but we want to give the skin a little bit more of a paleness when painting the face I'm going for that sharp nose and the points of the cheeks trying not to get everywhere because if, if you just started jabbing that paintbrush in to, to get like under his eyes or his eyebrows, then you lose all of that uh, shade and definition. You can see that he's still got some shading uh, eyeshadow. He's got some Raiklin flesh shade eyeshadow on. We didn't really touch up there. Okay, so while we're letting the skin dry, we're going back to the Agrax Earth Shade and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some water to it. I've got some water on my, on my wet palette there and Instead of a wash, what, I'm cre what I've created is a glaze. So that, that dark Agrax earth shade gets on it, but it doesn't completely change the color of that Rackard flesh shade, or Rackard flesh, uh, that, that tone. When you water down your shade like that, it allows it to kind of uh, spread out and thin on the higher highlighted surfaces and then kind of get into those recesses and create the shadow there. That's what I wanted. I didn't want to really change that Rackard flesh color, but I wanted to just heighten the shadows. All right, he's looking great. Look at that hat. It's got some real good definition to it now. The metallics look spot on. We are really getting to the end here with this model. And the next step that we're going to be doing is what is it the anticipation is killing me i don't remember i filmed this two days ago oh my gosh oh my gosh it's stay tuned for the next clip black that's right players we are going to get back in black we're going to do the eyeballs and this, <laughs> this is a tricky one a lot of black paint spooged onto my wet palette there oh I hate, hate wasting paint like that so all right what we're doing is I'm I'm this I've decided I'm gonna use it you know it's it's on the wet palette I might as well use it so I, I primed the model in white and that means that his awesome scenic base he's standing on like some stone rubble is uh, still white and needs to be it needs to be painted so I've decided to just use the black that's on my wet palette there and just cover that up. I think I think I actually um, go off and do the rest of the bases because there's so much paint that spilled out. You know, I love Vallejo colors. I, I think there's so much more uh, valuable. They have so much more value to them than the Games Workshop ones because the Games Workshop pots can dry out on you and you don't even know that it's happening but the uh, Vallejo ones any anything in a dropper bottle looks really really good so and, and it, it it sits in there it doesn't dry out I haven't noticed it drying out I'm also going to be taking the black 
paint and painting in all of the buttons from the other models. This one, the buttons are kind of obscured by the beard and, and the, the hand across the body holding the gun there, so you can't really see any buttons, but um, you can use your, your black paint for all the street-like buttons. All right, I've gotten some questions in the past about how I paint eyeballs. It's very simple. You put a little bit of paint on the very tip of your brush and then very, very carefully point a horizontal slash across, across the eyes. And you want to just cover the eyeballs. Sometimes it's tricky to see where do the eyeballs end and where do the uh, little bags under the eyes begin? Where does the uh, eyebrow how low does it hang over the eye? So we only want to get the eyeball. But if we get a little bit of the surrounding area, in this case, I'm doing what I call like the, the Cow Drogo eyeshadow effect where the, the black kind of seeps into the surrounding area, then that's, that's OK, too. And you can see I'm going back over with my flesh color, and I'm just fixing the areas that the black is kind of ran into and, and leaked onto. So he is looking just perfect right now. If I was to even do anything with white, which I'm going to paint now using white paint, then it's very, very, it would be very easy to obscure the work that I did. I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to take a, again, a thin little line of white paint on the very, very tip of my fine detail brush. And all I want to do is create a horizontal line within the horizontal line of black. You don't want to cover the black completely. You don't want giant googly eyes. You want your white paint to just be a very thin line. And sometimes it's easier to do it horizontally like this, holding the model straight up. Sometimes it's easier to hold the model sideways and then paint vertically, do vertical brush strokes to paint the horizontal eyes and then hold it up right side. For me, this is the technique that I use. I'm showing you, I kind of hold it upside down with my left hand and then I paint it in the right. And so you can see that's the effect I get. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that black paint and I'm going to fix the eyelid a little bit or the, the, the eyeball. And then all I do is as best as I can paint a vertical slash in the middle of the white. And sometimes you don't get it, and that's fine. Sometimes you get it, and it looks really great. Uh, I had to cut the camera there, and um, you, you probably won't even see it, because now the white area has become so small. And first I debated, like, oh, I should go back in with that white paint and really pop out those eyeballs. But I realized, you know, he's kind of an angry guy. He's kind of squinty. You don't need to see the uh, entire whites of his eyeballs and uh, so, yeah, that's it. That's what he looks like. I actually forgot to paint one thing, which is what I'm going to do right now. It's going to be Rune Fang Steel just cleaning up the silver bits. So I'm going to do that. And while I do, I'm just going to talk to you about my wargaming life, about YouTube, about Patreon. Uh, like I think it was Lewis that mentioned, I'm uh, putting all of my work for free on YouTube but uh, I do have a Patreon page if you'd like to support my studio, if you'd like to donate and, and help me out. I'm putting exclusive content onto the Patreon, and um, I'm doing it for, for paid customers, as well as I'm also putting free content up there. So if you subscribe to me through there, through Patreon, then you can get access to all the free stuff, like the Game of Thrones podcast the Lady Boss and I are doing. We're only going to be putting it up on Patreon and not through iTunes or anything else like that. Um, a lot of uh, product reviews and uh, podcasts, everything that I can do, I'm going to be doing through Patreon, just uh, posting as, up as much as I can through there. I'm also doing the May Painting Challenge right now. We're right in the middle of it with uh, my challenge, so you can follow me on My War Gaming Life up there, or just uh, look at all the update videos that I'm doing. And yeah, I'm showing you just the, the chain mail down there on the model. That's it, you guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you had a great time, and uh, I can't wait to do more tutorials. More tutorials, yay!